They're great gifts for the book lovers in your life. People love getting them as gifts. They're one of a kind and they're handcrafted and they are art that you can take along when you have your book and they're useful. You can tuck them into a birthday or greeting card as a surprise gift. The materials and tools are listed in the description. Let's make some bookmarks. I have my materials here and tools. Here's my watercolor paper, my paints, brushes, my water, tape, a hole punch, some thread, salt, and Q-tips. So let's start with the painting process. Now, with our paper, we need to tape it down. And we tape it down so the watercolor paper won't buckle and it's easier to work with. So here is my paper that I taped down. Now, the bookmarks you can make, I suggest the smallest one inch to three inches. And here I taped off this one is about two inches, this one is closer to three, and this is about two and a half. So now let's get started with the painting process. Okay, for the first one, let's take our mop brush wet your brush and we'll use some intense blue but you know there's one thing I forgot and it's easy to reverse that but we always want to use our spray bottle to loosen our paints up, let's wet them and put some water in our palette. All right, so I have some blue here and I'm gonna paint this whole thing blue. And then we'll stop for a minute. And take our Q-tips. And press down on the watercolor paper to make some white dots. like so. Now what's nice is you can let this sit and dry a little bit before we go on to working on it. Let's continue to the next one. On this one let's paint some hearts on it. Taking our round with pointed tip brush and use some crimson. Load your brush.
make some heart shape. I find it easier to start at the top and then work your way down. Now it's time to add the salt. Now when you're using the salt method, you will want to use a darker color to get the texture. The lighter the color, it won't show up as much. So we're going to give our hearts some textures by adding some salt when the paint is wet. Now we can go back to our first one and I notice it started to pool with color here and I don't like that. And so this is still wet and I'm going to fix it by taking my Q-tip and lifting some of that puddles out of that. That looks better. Okay. Now, let's go to the third space we have here. Now, let's add some plants. Let's take our round with pointed tip brush. I was just checking if my brush was clean. And load your brush with sap green. And I really like the plan. I think it's called a hyacinth. And do some leaves here with a stem and we'll paint a plant there but first we're drawing the stems of the plant like so. Now I am going to take a moment here and use the hair dryer 
to speed up to speed up the process of drying. Okay, let's take a round with pointed tip brush and you want to go to our third bookmark here and add a darker green. So load your brush with the sap green and a touch of burnt umber. like that. Then clean your brush and now we'll add the flower and the flower is a purple, kind of a bluish purple. So we'll be mixing the crimson with the intense blue. And that will make it a more purple color. And just put a few dots on some of those, one of the long stems there. Like so. Okay, now let's go back to the first section here. And this reminds me of sky. So let's take our round with pointed tip brush and make a mountain here and some water here. And the, mar the mountain is going to be darker in color. So let's take our intense blue and add some burnt umber. And make a mountain kind of line there.
then on this area here, let's just add some intense, straight, intense blue to make some water. like so. Now let's give it a quick dry. Okay, you know it's easy to add a lot of details to watercolor and know when you want to stop. I like the white background in this and this, so I'm going to leave it like that. And then I like the texture this one gives off. So I so I'm ready to take the tape off. So. And then we'll go on to the next step. So the next step is we will cut these out and you might have noticed that on the hearts, I have not brushed the salt off. But I like to wait to the last minute with that, because the more you let it dry, the better it is. So when we get to doing the heart one, we'll brush the salt off. And so you might have a laminator, and you can go ahead and use that. I don't have one. But I find that if you just use packing tape, that can work just as well. So let's go ahead and cut the bookmarks out. And again, there's two ways that you can do that. You can use plain scissors. And in one of my earlier lessons, I did card making and showed that I used a paper cutter. You can use a paper cutter for this or just use plain scissors. Whichever works and whichever what you have. Now on this one on the landscape here, you might want to keep the white edge. It kind of, it will frame it. 
or not. That is your personal preference. I think I like the white edge around it, so I will be leaving mine. Like so. Looks like I didn't get it totally straight, but that's when it's good to have your scissors handy and you can trim it if it doesn't seem right to you, like so. And here's my hearts. Now, this is when I'm going to brush the salt out, off. And you will want to place a paper towel underneath it and just brush the salt off. Sometimes it's hard to get it all off, but there, there's a few salt pieces on the paper. It won't hurt it. It'll just create more texture. Now I'm going to use my scissors on this one to trim it more. Okay, now this is when we, let's use our hole puncher. So f find that spot. And make a punch. Okay, now for the tape. Now this is a little wider than the tape and so what I'm going to do is I might have to put another piece on it and that's okay. I like to lay it down like this and then go ahead and cut the piece and then leave it laying down. Pull another piece out. Like that. And then cut it. And 
And then if you want to, you know, sign your name before you seal it up, you can. So on the back of here, I'm going to put my initials KN. And then if you also have a sticker with your information, you can also put that on. laying flat like that just go ahead and put the a piece on the back And then you can go ahead and trim it with your scissors. And then we will need to go ahead and repunch the hole there. I waited to do that because when you add the tape, it makes it a little, it makes it thick and a little harder to do the hole punch. And then that's when we have our thread come in. And I like to use three colors. And with this one, there's blues and there's some white. So there's three. And what you do is But you could also use ribbon or yarn if you have that, of three different colors. I like using the embroidery thread because then it's thin. And so if someone takes a bookmark and puts it in a book, then it's not too thick. So then you want to take the thread and double it like that. And then come on the end and trim it and cut. And then go ahead and keep it even and thread it through like that and make a loop and pull it through and then pull. And then you have your tail there. Then we'll go on to do these two. So 
So here's my last one to do. Alrighty, just going to trim this a little bit. There we go. So now I'm going to take this scrap of paper out of my book and put one of my nice bookmarkers. Journey of the Heart. It has a heart on it. That looks like a good one. If you'd like to give watercolor a try, please subscribe to my channel and take a lesson or two. Please join me next time when we'll make another creative craft from our watercolors. Take care, be safe, and see you soon.